Good morning and thank you for joining us today. Our presider is our parochial vicar, Father Bill. Please rise as we begin our celebration. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Good morning. And I guess we're going to get some more rain. It's not quite time to build an ark yet, but we may get to that point. As we enter into the presence of the Lord today, we celebrate the Feast of St. Pius X. We have a, a school and a parish named after St. Pius, who was rigorous in encouraging education. And so as we enter into the celebration, we always begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace and love of God our Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind God's mercy and grace. Lord, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You've come to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who to the safeguard of the Catholic faith and the restorer of all things in Christ, filled St. Pius, Pope Pius X, with a heavenly wisdom and apostolic fortitude and gracious get, uh, graciously grant that following his teaching and example we may gain eternal prize. The Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, and God forever and ever. From the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we drew courage through our God to speak to you the gospel of God with much struggle. Our exhortation was not from the delusion or impure motives, nor did it work through deception. But as we were judged worthy by God to be entrusted with the gospel, that is how we speak, not as trying to please men, but rather God who judges our hearts. Nor indeed did we ever appear with flattering speech, as you know, or with a pretext for greed. God is witness. Nor did we seek praise from men, either from you or from others, although we were able to impose our weight as the apostles of Christ. Rather, we were gentle among you, as a nursing mother cares for her children. With such affection for you, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of, the God, of God, but our very selves as well. So dearly beloved had you become to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I've sworn to David my servant. Forever I will confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may always be with him, and that my arm may make him strong. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lamb. Then he said to Simon Peter, a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed because he said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, uh, when we get the rains like this, it reminds me of that joke about uh, the man in Louisiana who uh, was being hit by the floods and... Uh, the first day, he's out on the roof of his porch, and the rains have come in, and really raised up, and a motorboat comes by, and the guy says, jump in, we'll rescue. And he says, no, no, I'm waiting for God to trust that he will, he will save me. Second day, a bigger boat comes in, 
because the rains have come up to the second floor and he's standing at the window. And he said, jump in, save you. He said, no, no, I trust the Lord, he's going to save me. Well, the third day he's on the roof and the rain comes in or a helicopter drops a ladder, says, climb up the ladder, we'll save you. He says, no, no, I'm waiting for the Lord. So when the final flood comes, he, he, he drowns and he gets to heaven and he said, Lord, why didn't you save me? And he's, he said, I sent you a motorboat, I sent you a bigger boat, and I sent you a helicopter. What more can I do? So if the motorboat comes looking for you, jump in. <laughs> Today, as we celebrate um, this feast of St. Pius, we look at him as a figure who was, he grew, in, grew up in poverty. He lived a life of poverty, and he prayed that he would die in poverty except for the Lord. But his poverty would be the symbol of his, his total abandonment to the power of God, the poverty of his life and his spirit dying over to the Lord. And, and I think that that's a powerful reminder to us because in reality, no matter where we come from, no matter what we have, we are born into the poverty of spirit of God we live in the poverty of the Spirit of God, and we pray that we will die in fulfilling that poverty of spirit that God wants for us. And that spirit is that dependency upon him, recognizing that without him we are nothing. Recognizing that without him we are nothing. Unlike the guy with the motorboat who believed that there was more to it than that. So today, as we, as we live in this relationship, and we're taught by the example of St. Pius X, we're, we're taught that we are to rely on the Lord, trust in the Lord, lean on the Lord. I know I try to do that when I recognize how there's the great need that I continually have of being able to be his minister of life, being his priest of life, and being a Christian of life. So we are called all the same to recognize that we share in our baptism in the reality of that poverty of spirit that the Lord wants us to have, trusting in him, being open to him, loving him, and serving him in one another. My sisters and brothers, let us turn to the Lord on this feast day of St. Pius X, trusting in God's mercy and his love for us. We pray for the church and the work that St. Pius did to bring about the education and the formation of the faithful in through the improvement on canon law and the work of bringing about biblical understanding and the Eucharist, that we may be open to the ways that he fills us with life, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the examples of the saints, that they may always help us how we ourselves are called to follow the Lord, we pray to the Lord. 
We pray for our church transfiguration. We, God's holy people, that we may always walk in the way of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. For those who do not pray or those who do not know how to pray, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are affected by the coronavirus, we pray that the Lord may continue to bring about an end to this virus by finding, helping doctors and chemists to develop the cure and to rapidly give it to the people that we might have life, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the prayers that are in the silence of each one of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. For Mary Ann Dempsey, for this, whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Father of mercy and love, hear the prayer of your people and help us to always trust in you to recognize that all that we are and all that we have is because of your great love for us. For we ask all things in the imitation of St. Pius X through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which, which earth has given human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for us. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of all his holy church. Receive with kindness our oblation and grant, O Lord, we pray, that following the teachings of St. Pius, we may celebrate the divine mystery with sincerity and reverence and receive from the spirit of faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as on the feast of St. Pius X, you bid the church to rejoice, so to be strengthened by the example of his holy life, teaching us by his words of preaching, keeping us safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and the saints, and then sing a hymn of praise, as without end we acclaim. <laughs>
indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending out your spirit upon them like the dewfall. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Holy Father, with Gregory John, the Archbishop, and with Joel and Bernard, his brother bishops, and all your clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our Blessed Spouse, St. Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, and with St. Pius X, and all your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Savior has commanded us, informed us by divine teaching, so we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, make us always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Bread of life, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. If you're joining this Mass online, please pray this prayer at this time. My Jesus, on the day of my baptism, you poured your love into my heart through the Holy Spirit, who unites me eternally to you. Through that same Spirit, I pledge my love and adore you, present in your most holy body and blood. Though I cannot consume you in this sacred banquet, let me be consumed by your complete desire for me so that my longing for you may be filled by your love alone and your mercy overflow through me into this world so in need. Amen.
because we won't be celebrating it tomorrow, I'll be mentioning the beautiful celebration of the Queenship of Mary. And uh, one of my assignments as a pastor for seven and a half years was a Queen of Angels, which is the which is another name for the Queenship of Mary. And we had this beautiful, beautiful stained glass window created of her. And uh, a glorious thing to look at. My predecessor came back to fill in for me when I was away and he hadn't seen the window and he looked up and he said several times during mass, he whispers by, by uh, because it was an afternoon sun that catches it. Oh, what a beautiful window. Oh, what a beautiful window. But it is a beautiful feast to celebrate. Um, it's one of the mysteries of the rosary. And so we remember her tomorrow in our hearts and our minds. Let us pray. Celebrate the memorial of the Pope St. Pius. We pray, O Lord, our God, that we may, by the power of the heavenly table, be constant in our faith and be one in accord with your love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We go forward this day to love, serve, and to grow in the awareness of the Lord.